Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're chatting with a man who's always got wood. Hey family, I hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. This is episode 135 of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, and today we're chatting with Russ from Natural Smoke. Russ is based out of Adelaide in South Australia, and he has got some cracking timbers and some fantastic smoking ideas, and I'm really looking forward to talking to him. But before we get into that, I've got a couple of announcements that I do need to run by you first. I want to give a huge shout out and thanks to Meat and Fire Media Services who've jumped on board as our podcast partner for this episode. They're right into their barbecue and also their social media and digital media. So if you're out there, you're trying to build a brand, you might be trying to put together a barbecue team, attract sponsors, all of that sort of thing. You really want to check out the course that they have currently available, brand building through strategic social media marketing. And for you wonderful podcast viewers and listeners, right now they're running a special for Christmas. Use the code word SANTA at check out to save 50% off their course. Next up, I just want to give you a quick reminder that Christmas is just around the corner. If you did want to grab yourself a Smoking Hot Confessions t-shirt or a tumbler or some stickers, or if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you might be looking for a hoodie and a beanie, things like that. Make sure you order them this week if you want them under your Christmas tree on Christmas Day, and I will make sure I get down to the post office the very day after you make your order, and I'll get them in there for you. Of course, if you are new to barbecue, do head on over to the Smoking Hot Confessions website. We have a free ebook available, The Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. A pop-up window is going to appear in front of you. Just put your details into that and we'll shoot that straight out into your inbox. We also have our free Facebook group available, The Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Community. Come on over, check that out. It's a real nice corner of the internet. We leave all the rubbish at the door and we just hang out and talk barbecue. There's some beautiful people in there and a hell of a lot of wisdom to help get you set up and get you started. And I tell you what, it's my favorite place to be. Now, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, give us that thumbs up, hit that subscribe and the little notification bell. If you're watching on Facebook, give us a like and a share, drop a comment if you've got a question you need answered. If you're watching on Instagram, give us a little love heart and a follow. And if you're listening on a podcasting app, particularly if it's Apple, Please take two minutes out of your time. Give us a five-star rating and review. It really helps us out. And it tells Apple that they should show the show to more people like you because you like it, they'll like it, and it helps us out as well. Now, today's episode, as I said at the top, we are chatting with Russ from Natural Smoke. Natural Smoke is a family-owned business. They do a hell of a lot of work to support the local SA barbecue scene and beyond. And most interestingly, they have a custom cut-to-size option available for you. So if you have a particular, I don't know, a homemade smoker, it's got particular dimensions, you can just put that through in the order on the internet and they will get it shipped out cut-to-size, which is fascinating. But you probably don't want to hear about it from me. You probably want to hear about it from Russ. So, let's get him in here. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? All righty, Russ. Thank you for joining me in the confessional. How are you today, mate? Good, mate. How are you going? Good, good. It's been the uh, the end of the term at the uh, college that I work at, so I'm pretty shattered. I've been knee deep in paperwork all week, but I'm very happy. I've got a nice cold drink here, and I'm getting to talk barbecue with you. How are you, though, sir? Your background there looks amazing. What have you got there? Yeah, so um, I thought I'd start off on the, the on the right side, mate, and get some of that thin blue smoke rolling for you. Um, Love it. So we've got a got the offset um, on my right, and and my new drum on on my left. So. Um, and he got that uh, uh, the weekend just gone, adding the from Mutius Australia brought it over. Um, and him and his lad stayed for the weekend, so that was pretty cool. Um, did the first cook up in it, um, some pulled pork, and it ran like a dream. So that's that's my favorite barbecue is a, is a drum. The one I've got, um, is was this one that I'd made, um, just a 44 gallon drum, Bunnings parts. So, so this is a bit of an upgrade, yeah. I dare say it is, mate. Well, it, it looks fantastic. I mean, he did a fantastic job. A lot of hours have gone into this. Yeah, it's yeah, great. I, yeah, I was watching his trip on the socials. Just uh, he was stopping every couple of hundred kilometers and saying, "Here I am, there I am." So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that's um, that's really top stuff. But tell me, how did it run? You you said it ran really well. Tell us about it. 
Yeah, good. So, so the reason why I chose pork shoulder is I wanted something that um, I could experiment with, with, with temperatures. So I wanted to see how responsive, you know, closing and opening those vents were. And, 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 you know, in comparison to my other drum, it was actually really good. So, you know, opening those vents up, lifted the temperature, you know, and then sort of got to about 300, 320. And I thought, right, now time to wind it back. And, uh, and, and it responded really well. So, so that was, that was good, much, much better than, than my old, my old banger did. So, you know, great, really good. They're, look, they're, they're easy. You know, people talk about set and forget barbecues. Well, drums, once you um, have a bit of practice, they're very much like that. Really good. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And you've got uh, a fire burning in an offset there as well. Yeah, well, just keep me warm because, uh, you know, where I live, um, you know, I'm on the Fleurier Peninsula, South Australia, so and all around me is um, cleared dairy land, so there's, there's not, not a lot of trees. So, so we get some pretty cold evenings, so that's actually keeping me nice and warm at the moment. Oh, um, I, I, I thought you just lit that just for me for the ambiance. Well, that, that, that too, mate, that too. <laughs> so the last thing that, that you cooked was a, was a pork shoulder for, for pulled pork. How, how did that turn out? Really good. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, um, get it to the, you know, rough temp to 200-ish, but, you know, use your probe, get it so it's, you know, probing nicely. And, you know, like it's, it's pretty, hard to, pretty hard to bugger up. You know, a bit of, bit of practice, um, you know, mixed in, a, mixed in some sauce at the end, you know, it was sweet based because I was cooking for, cooking for my kids. And um, what we did is we um, used some of the, uh, the famous dick buns. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the dick buns. I think everyone just about has. Um, I have, the- but it just cracks me up every time. <laughs> uh, you know, Tony Dick makes some a really good brioche. So what we did, um, pork, pork on the bottom, um, then we did some uh, corn chips and then like a guacamole. So um, Adam, made that, Adam, Adam made the guacamole. So, um, and then just, yeah, in the dick buns and beautiful. Messy, delicious. Yeah, sounds fantastic. Now, your kids obviously they um, they prefer the the thicker, sweeter sauces to some of the Carolina mustard sauce or the um, or well, the vinegar type sauces. Yeah, for sure. Look, um, I think I think people, you know, barbecuers that cook for kids, it's always something you have to consider. I mean, it, it's fun cooking barbecue all day, but then you, know, you put it in front of your kids and they don't eat it, and well, then you you cook spaghetti after. So, so you know, like you know. We, you know Two kids, five and seven, they're very much, you know, the fans of the sweet stuff and, and definitely no heat. So that's, that's, that's generally what we, what we do at home. Um, but, you know, we, we do have quite a few visitors here. You know, like I've got people that come here, um, you know, Tom, Dane, Jesse, um, lots of the SA Barbecue crew come here as well as, um, as, well as customers and stuff, um, you know, some stockers, some butchers as well. So, so you know, that gives me an opportunity to, to – you know, cook some different stuff, add, and add some heat in there, you know, so it's all good. I like cooking it all. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. So is, is that your your favourite thing to barbecue then? Is it like like a big pork shoulder for pulled pork? Yeah, look, I think my favourite thing to cook is stuff that my kids will eat, so that's that's a good one. You know, pork is good. Um, um, I lo- love cooking a steak. Um, look, we don't, we don't cook a lot of brisket because – my, again, my kids are a bit sensitive to it. Um, so, so like, I mean, that's on a special occasion. Um, but, yeah, definitely a lot of pork, a lot of chicken. Like, I love doing just a, just a standard chicken boot, indirect in the weather, you know, nice glaze, slice it up. You know, it's good for that mid, midweek meal, you know. So, um, you know, slice it up and go on some rice and couscous in a salad. So it's very versatile. So that's that's the sort of, that's the sort of cooking we do a lot. You know, because again, you've got to you've got to feed your family at the end of the day. Yeah, there's no point. Uh, you know, cooking cooking two or three meals every meal. So exactly. if you can uh, if you can make everyone happy, then that's a winner. For sure. So, mate, tell us how you got into uh, into barbecue. So my first barbecue was a heart cabinet smoker. Um, I would have bought that 10 plus years ago and um, made a lot of jerky. I liked, um, I, I really liked um, smoking fish. So, you know, we'd go to the, um, you know, get some like, Tommy's um, mackerel. I like the oily fish, sit it on the racks, you know, obviously gas, gas powered, um, just with some wood chips or sawdust or whatever it be. And, um, and so things have progressed from there. So I um, got a Weber. Um, started experimenting with that, um, needed to learn how to use it. And that's how I found SA barbecue. So, um, 
you know, and then and then shortly after the business came. So, but we'll we'll have a chat about that a bit later. But definitely, um, Mike, I spent years making you know jerky and smoking fish on a on a hot gas cabinet smoker. That's interesting. There's not too many people that I talk to tell me that they're into smoking fish. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Mate, fish fish is really nice in the smoker. Um, you, you can, I mean, I, I kept it simple. So it um, would just be smoke, bit of salt, bit of pepper, olive oil. You know, I put some cherry tomatoes in there. And at the end of it, you'd sort of, you know, like just, you know, the, the, the bones would just peel straight out of the fish. Generally, it would be, you know, you get rid of the head and just, butterfly the fish and just sit it on the rack. Um, and, you know, those things were in a reasonable size, so, you know, you could load it up. So um, at that time, we were living in Port Perry. I was working in Port Perry and, um, you know, lots of Greek and Italian people there. So, you know, we had some neighbours that we'd invite over and just we'd just share that. Mate, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. So is it like a reverse sear then? Do you, like, put a bit of smoke on for a little while and then grill it after that or is it just smoke it all the way through? Make it all the way through, you know, until done temp, um, and then you know you, you can you can tell like it just becomes flaky, and and that particular type of fish, that oily fish, just you know just went buttery, and you know like there'd be occasions where you have to be careful when you're bringing it out of the out of the smoker because otherwise it'll all just fall apart. So, um, but you know you, with with fish, I never you know you don't want to overdo it with smoke. Um, then we we do it in the um, in the kettle all the time now. Um, at just the Atlantic salmon. Um, I've, I had some really, really nice smoked salmon from Kelly, um, who was a butcher down here, um, had St. James Connolly cuts, um, some of the best, you know, she did smoked salmon. That was some of the best I'd ever had. And it was just, it's just buttery smoke goes really well with fish. And yeah, we, we love it. Kid, that's another one for the kids too. The kids love it. Really? The kids love smoked fish? Yep. Interesting. The only fish I can get my kid to eat is like deep fried and battered from the fish and chip shop around the corner. Yeah, so I think I think um, I think a lot of people they their experience with smoked fish is probably cold smoke. And it is a different it is a different flavour. It's more intense. Um, you know, it, it, cold smoking is different, has different flavours. Whereas when you're introducing heat and you're actually cooking the fish with you know with with some nice light smoke, it beautiful goes really well together. Yeah, it sounds delicious. Mm. So that's how you got into barbecue. You started out with the little Coleman gas barbecue and then you moved up from there. And now you, we've just talked about your, your offset and your drum. Um, how did you get into competition barbecue? Because the first time I met you was at Up in Smoke in two, January 2019 or February. Yep, yep. Um, and you were competing there. So tell us about that, that move into competition barbecue. Well, I wasn't actually competing and I don't compete. However, um, we sponsor a number of barbecue teams. Um, and when I say when I say sponsor, it's you know I mean we we, we I love being involved in in the barbecue competition scene. That's one of my, my one of my favourite things to do is is when they're competing, I go there. I talk, it's an opportunity to talk to lots of people, um, in particular the SA barbecue crew. Um, and I mean, with Tony, Dick, and I have got a bit of a running joke that we're going to compete next year, and you know. We've got all sorts of funny names for our barbecue team. But um, look, um, and look, I'm not saying that won't ever happen, but it's unlikely. You know, Tony's, Tony's real busy and so am I. But look, and, and, and we, like, we like cruising around and talking to people and getting a sneaky taste test here and there. I'm sure, though, that I have a, like a, like a, I have a very clear memory of you using like an old iron pressing down on a, on a steak on a Red Weber. Look, I, I've not actually competed, and, and I might have been playing around with a, um, you know, with a with a steak press searing a steak, but that was just a bit of fun. But on that day in particular, um, I was there with Smoky Pastures, um, just uh, showing my stuff. Like I was very new in as far as the business goes, and um, and and was just trying to, you know, get get it known that we were here when we were local, and um, I mean, you know, hanging around with Noles and Tom's good fun any day. Yeah, Tom's a good guy. I've I've had him on the show here a couple of times. Yeah, very very smart dude. Very very great cook too. Learn, yeah, learn, yeah. A lot from Tom. learn a lot from Tom. Yeah, yeah. I'd I'd imagine he's got a real scientific approach to uh, no, to his he, methodology. Yeah. So so I mean we'll, we'll probably talk about it a bit later. But he he's helped me in my business a lot. Um, you know, when we first started, got lots of advice from him. Um, worked quite closely with um, developing that wood smoking guide that we that we put out. Um, so, you know, yeah, 
Very, very smart dude. He's very successful in his own business as well. He is, yeah, yeah. Mm. So look, let's dive into the SA barbecue scene for a little bit now. Um, where is the best barbecue in South Australia? Well, I think, and again, it's a bit of a joke, but uh, Dane Cowan's house, I reckon. Um, <laughs> if you can get an invite, uh, I've been lucky <laughs> enough to get a couple of invites to, to Dane's place. Um, but like you got RGs up north, um, you know, there's one in Port Adelaide. I've not been to that low and slow. Um, and, um, but look, there's a lot of people in SA that are cooking really good barbecue and there's the potential. There's definitely the potential um, for somebody to start something pretty cool. Um, it's been particular down south. I mean, Rick's, Rick's up north um, or, or city bound. Um, I keep pushing Dane just to sort of do stuff. I mean, his, his, um, his skills and, and knowledge and, and his cooking repertoire is huge, whether it be, you know, <coughs> excuse me, whether it be, you know, Asian inspired, American barbecue, Mexican. So like, again, like with Tom, I've learned a lot from Dane. Dane's got the, uh, the presentation and the photography skills to really put together some killer marketing to get people into his joint if he did open one up too. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's actually, um, he's actually feeling a bit sore. So uh, at the moment he's just had an operation. So mate, best, hope, hope you're going all right and, and healing up nicely. Oh yeah. I thoughts are, uh, are, are out to him too from us as well. I, I wasn't aware of that. Hope he's he feels good. better soon. He, he's tough. He'll be right. <laughs> good. Uh, so just sticking with the theme of South Australian ingredients. Now we're going to talk a little bit later about your woods, but can you tell me about some, uh, some specific local SA ingredients that make it into the barbecue scene? So it might be particular meat brands or herbs, spices, that sort of thing. So there's a few SA people, uh, one being Tom, you know, you got Craig, um, sucking up with smokers, um, you know, BRZ, rub and grub. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to forget a couple of others, but there's a lot of local guys, again, they're competition barbecuers, and so their flavour profiles are generally fairly bold because obviously, as you know, with competition, the people are having one bite, and so, so you know, when, when, when they've created their rubs and seasonings, there's no, there's no rubbish in it. There's no fillers. It's all just, you know, flavour-packed, well-balanced, bittersweet, heat, salt, pepper. So, so like they, they work really well. Um, you know, but but you know, and 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 I am aware of some others that are um are looking to come into the market. So, you know, lots of people in SA are very very talented as far as well barbecue is concerned. Um, you know, whether it be you know taking good pictures, creating good rubs, good flavors. So where you know the SA barbecue scene is in is in a really good spot. Yeah, there's some really interesting stuff coming out of there now. I never actually got to make it to the place, but I did read, re- well, reasonably recently, that Sneaky Pickle's gone now. Yeah, so, like, um, you know, we, we, we went to a, um, an amateur comp that was there, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened with that. Yeah, that not, was a not, shame. Everybody was, was raving yeah. about it. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was really good, good quality, for sure. It was good. I, I like that place because... You go in there and you could see all the smokers, you know, I think the Meadow Creek, I think, you know, big offsets, big cabinets, you know, like you can, you can see what they've been cooking in, you know, like it's, it's just, there was something genuine about it. Yeah, that's, that is really important when you are putting together a barbecue joint is to let the people see it. There's a, um, there was a barbecue restaurant that I went to in Texas, um, was the first one I went to in Texas, Hard Eights, I think it's called, and they actually run the line into the restaurant through the pit yard. So you're actually walking past all the smokers, watching all the uh, the smokers get opened and the meats get pulled off and all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't think we'd ever get away with that with our strict OHS laws here in Australia, but um, that was really impressive. Like they yeah. they they got people running up and down the line selling beers out of uh, ice buckets and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So, and I think that's that's really good because there's not a lot of people. I mean, there'd be people that would go to that restaurant that didn't know how this barbecue was cooked. You know, there's, I mean, up until probably four or five years ago, I didn't know what an offset smoker was. And so, and I think, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people would be in the same boat. So like, you know, they'd go to a barbecue, you know, like they go to the Sneaky Pickle or RGs and, and, and not actually know or understand the, well, not only the equipment that goes into cooking this stuff, but, you know, the time, you know, like, um, you know, when you, when you've got your offset and you're running, you know, low temperatures and you've got it fully loaded, like, you know, like that's, that's a big, investment in time and I think it's good 
I think it's good to to show your customers that. Um, well, because it you know it is educational, and but not only that, but it ju- can justify the price. People understand what goes into something. You can understand why a barbecue platter might cost you 150 bucks because there's been 12 hours of work to go into it. Hi there, Ben from Meat and Fire Media Services here where we help your business put the meat on the table. Social media. For some, these two words strike terror in their hearts. Everybody says if businesses aren't on social media, then they are missing out. But where do businesses even start? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok, so many others. All the different platforms, the different audiences, the different algorithms, it can be very intimidating and incredibly overwhelming. There can be so much to think about, it's hard to know where to even begin. As a result, a lot of businesses end up in a kind of stress paralysis and doing nothing. And if they're doing nothing, then they're not gonna be making any sales. A system is what's needed to make sense of all of this. A system that can be easily implemented for any business and ensure engagement with potential customers. A system that establishes a business as an authority in the field. A system that is easy to follow and includes tools to make a business owner's life easier and maximize leverage from the time taken to put it into place. Our course, Brand Building Through Strategic Media Marketing, is that system. This is the exact process that we use to take our sister company, Smoking Hot Confessions, from an idea on the couch in suburban Australia to award-winning barbecue media outlet recognized by industry bodies in the United States. We have a step-by-step system laid out in detail, lists of various online tools that we use, and lessons in how to use those tools. We kick things off with an explanation of the different platforms out there to help businesses select the right platform for them based on their audience demographics, content type, and then matching that with their own strengths. We then take them on a tour of their existing audience to mine useful data to ensure maximum impact of their new strategies. And finally, we take businesses through the step-by-step process needed to build their own social media marketing system that builds their brand targeting exactly the right follower and future customers. We even have exclusive Facebook groups where they'll join a community of like-minded business owners who are all going through the same journey. To get started today, click through to our website, enroll, and I'll see you in there. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. All right, Russ, let's get into natural smoke, mate. Tell us um, all about the business, but let's start off with, first of all, before we even get into how it started, I want to know why wood? Because when a lot of people get into barbecue businesses, you see them opening vans or trailers or some people jump straight into bricks and mortar joints. We've got tons of people going into rubs. What what pulled you to wood? I think it's a couple of things. So I grew up in my ponga and um, it gets cold down here. So uh, my, my job was to get the firewood ready. So we've in every house that I've lived in, I've had a wood fire. Um, oh, nice. so, so that was part of my part of my childhood was was splitting wood and, and getting it ready for the fire. So um, you know, we always like to cook on top of the fire. So even even like my, my old man and he just lives just down the road and he's still got the still got the fire that was that was there, you know, in my childhood and um you know we used to cook on the top of it. So um so you got that as well as my brother is an arborist and um and and through you know always having to go and buy, you know, little bags of chips or whatever for my, my cabinet smoker. I thought, you know, I well, probably could do this a little bit better. And, uh, and I remember the conversation I had with him, um, uh, the girls and I were out and about, and, and I, I thought, you know what, this is probably, this could be a, a potentially a, a good business idea. So um, my wife and I, well, my wife mainly um, had caught the business bug. She had a, um, she, she was doing, um, a thing with Rodan and Fuels, which is skincare stuff. And whilst it's, um, we didn't lose money on that, but the amount of time and effort she was putting into it just wasn't, just wasn't worth the investment. So um, we sort of put two and two together, you know, like the, the, the enjoyment and the, and the, you know, cooking barbecue and, and cooking at home as a kid. And we thought, you know, let's, let's see if we can work with my brother and, and create a business. And so that's what we did. Yeah. Nice. That's a very handy connection to have. Yeah, sure. So about how long ago did you get started? Look, I'll say probably three years and there was six months of preparation and, and you know, like, cause you've got to, you've got to source the wood, cut the wood. It's got to be seasoned correctly before you 
open your books up before you have anything to sell. You, yeah, you need to have it ready to go. And um, like I said, we did lots of research and which involved um, looking at what was available currently, excuse me, um, and working out basically how we could do it better. Um, but not only that, but like I said, I had, I had a lot to learn as far as the barbecue stuff goes. Like my, my barbecue knowledge was fairly minimal, but um, in the last sort of two and a half years, I'm pretty confident to say that I've studied barbecue. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people um, because I wanted, to, I wanted to have some integrity with the business in that it wasn't just about providing a product being wood. I wanted to know how it works, know how to cook barbecue, um, you know, know everything, well, know as much about it as I could. Um, and, and so when people come and ask me a question, I would have the answers for them. And so to do that, uh, I, yeah, like I said, I studied it. Yeah. Right. So were you, so in that case, then were you studying barbecue and studying wood at the same time? Like I'd, I do realize that you said that your job was always to chop the wood and to bring the household wood in. But I mean, from my chats with, with other, uh, wood guys, there's quite a science to it. So were you yeah, having to sure. learn that yeah. and learn barbecue at the same time? Correct. So that's where my brother came in. So he's, he's been an arborist for, you know, 15, 10, 15 years. And so um, I spoke to him a lot about things. I uh, also got a, a mate down here who's a, he's a, a, a timber miller. So he's got a big mill um, and, and uses a lot of timber. And, and like, it's, it's local stuff too. So, so, you know, like we were focused on local, wood, which is, you know, that's what our business is all about. All of our products come from South Australia. So what are some of those woods then that are local to South Australia? Well, I mean, you've got all your fruit woods. Um, so all of the stuff, all of our fruit woods, um, like I said, comes from SA. A lot of it comes from um, the Riverland area, which is where they commercially grow things like peaches, nectarines, pears, a lot of citrus, nice. um, uh, olives, etc. So that, that is a fair hike from us. It's a, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a long day. It's a four-hour trip one way. So, um, yeah, look, so they're, they're long days, you know, going to collect this stuff from the Riverland. So, um, you know, we're leaving here at sort of three o'clock in the morning, um, driving, driving there and, and not getting back till dark. And so, and quite often we'd be unloading the following day just because we were buggered. So, wow. you know, so, you know, and, and we do that because these, these growers, they're, you know, they've got personally a lot of product and so they've got hundreds of trees, but also these trees have got significant age. And so what that means is that, the, the, the size of limbs is large. And so, you know, you're not getting crappy little bits and, you know, having to, to, to get, you know, go here, there and everywhere to collect it. Like I can go to one location and I can pick up a ton or two tons of, of, of wood, let's say peach, for example, um, which is in, you know, sections like this, which makes it easier for me to process. So that would go, say, let's say, for example, would go onto my log saw, um, which, you know, would then, you know, I would cut, you know, chunks you know into chunks and then it goes on to my um i've got like a, a workbench where it's all hand cut with a little little axe so um you look a lot of a lot of a lot of work goes into it lucky enough my my old man comes and gives me a hand so uh, I, I couldn't i couldn't do it without him he, he comes to riverland as well so i drag him out of time and probably you know 15 16 times a year um and uh and you know we have a good time mate Oh, that's good, man. That's what it's all about too. If you've got the opportunity to make memories with family, very important to do it while you can. Yeah, look, this, um, this, that's what this business is all about. So, you know, my, my kids do a lot of the stickering, the bags, you know, hole punching of the bags. You know, Sarah does, a, Sarah does most, that's my wife, she does most of the admin. Um, like my, my mum and dad have both helped out a lot. The in-laws have helped out heaps. So, you know, we've, we've had significant help from family and friends. So you, you, you just, you can't. Well, we, we, we can't, we couldn't do it without them, basically. No doubt about that at all, yeah. So what have been some of the challenges that, that you've had to uh, overcome in, in, in setting up a wood business? Um, I think the challenges that come from starting any business. So, you know, we, you know, we hadn't done anything, well, apart from, apart from the right and fuels thing, which I didn't really have a lot to do with, um, that was more my wife. But, you know, when you're actually dealing with multiple customers, you know, setting up a website, that was really difficult. You know, Sarah did that and like that took, that took months. Um, you know, like Facebook pages, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to get your name out there either. So, you know, when you're going up against, you know, companies that like Heat Beats, for example, that have got products similar to ours, 
and they've got you know big marketing budgets where where we don't. So so that's you know getting getting out there is difficult. I mean, it took it took six months for us to to even start making any any money or getting any sales. And so you know that's a that's a fairly significant time to to sort of keep going without any real you know income basically. That's, that's rough, yeah. But you know, again, mate, we've had we've had so much support. It's um, it's actually, you know, in particular with South Australian people. It's um, I mean, what what we've achieved in in two two and a half years is um, is amazing, and it's it's I'm going to say it's largely thanks to the support that we've had from again like the SA Barbecue crew, um, and look now it's Australia wide. Like we've got we've got people all over Australia. A lot of um, competition. Uh, competition barbecue people as well have helped us helped us get our name out there and, and work with us. You know, we we um de- in, in particular down in SA we we have what we call Team SA. So um you know we have, there's a core group of businesses that um look out for each other, help each other. Um you know like um you got Olive Pitco, um you know Clean Heat, um, like Tony Dick, the Butchers. Um you know there's so many that when we, like, let's say I'll give you an example. So, like, let's say I'll go and talk to a potential stockist. Um, like, it's not it's not just talking about me and my business. I'll be talking about other locals as well. You know, like, rub and grub. Like, we've worked so well together. And, I, I mean, th- there would be probably 20 additional stockists that we've got that have come from that Team SA crew um, suggesting us. So... That's, I think it's like, it's like business teams. So like you got your footy teams or business teams. So when you're all looking out for each other, you know, it, it helps you all be successful. That's fantastic, man. I love that so much. I have actually noticed that a lot. Um, I see a lot of the, of the SA guys really get behind each other and really sort of help each other out. Um, even all, even all the way down to making sure that you all like and share and comment on each other's posts and things to trigger the algorithms and push it out and all that sort of stuff. So that's, that's yeah. really good to see. And that's, that's real grassroots, like guerrilla marketing really coming together and, um, and yeah, sort it, of- it's, um, yeah, look, I think it's, um, you know, obviously you've got to, you've got to focus on your, on your business, but I think, um, being, being part of a team and, and, you know, like let's say, let's say for example, um, you know, I'll do a post, I'll cook that I've done. And let's just say, for example, I got my, I got the meat from Austral Meats. I use some of Tom's rubs. Um, smoky pastures rubs, used a bit of olive pitco, you know, like so get get getting all of those businesses' names out there that are local, um, instead of just it, all your stuff being about yourself. So like and, and it creates a it creates an environment, a successful business environment. And so then so then people people can let's say like you, you know, Austral Mix for example, then they 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 have this like local support so then they can invest in getting in better products. And so, you know, you'll see a lot of the local butchers here in Adelaide, they're, they're getting like some premium quality beef, for example, and it's because people are getting in there and, and, and supporting their shops. Yeah, it's wonderful, man. It's so good to see. Yeah. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about wood specifically. So aside from the obvious, in barbecue, we need wood to make fire. Yep. Why is, let me phrase this differently, why is the quality of the wood important? Okay, so look, quality, quality of the wood is important. Um, obviously, when you're cooking food, you need to, you know, introduce quality products. So, so wood and smoke is one element of creating a, you know, a, a good meal. So, so when you, you know, you combine good fuel with good quality smoking wood, a quality rub, a nice balanced rub, and a quality protein, you bring all those together, and you get good barbecue. So, um, obviously, we do our bit, or as uh, as good as we can, to provide quality smoking wood um we we try and um we have a lot of variety because i think variety is a variety is what makes things interesting you know like you know people like to cook in different barbecues using different wood uh, different um, woods or fuels you know like whether it be 100 percent wood splits like this iron bark next to me or um or you know charcoal or, or briquettes in the drum with chunks you know like k- keeping things interesting is good um and so like you know you're um uh, for example, iron bar, right? So it's a dense wood, um, probably best suited, or what wow, I would suggest best suited for, say, beef, because you want that, you want that nice long burn time. Um, you want, you, you know, you want lots of smoke influence. Um, you know, um, with with a bit, um, additional burn time, 
um, you know, you're creating good bark. Um, and, and look, that, that burn time is coming from the density of the wood. So, you know, obviously your hardwood's denser, um, better suited for your longer cooks or your, or your you know, your, your, your um, red meat, beef, for example. Um, whereas, you know, with like your fruit woods, um, you know, white meats, chicken, um, pork, fish, that sort of stuff. But uh, obviously when you start looking into your fruit wood stuff, the, the density is lower and you get less of a burn time. But um, that that um, generally relates to a lower intensity. So um, again, like, like I said previously, like I like to do chicken breast um, for the kids. Um, I'll generally use like fruit wood and generally one chunk. So I want a fairly, fairly, you know, low to mild smoke influence. Whereas if I'm doing like beef cheeks, for example, and I want some really, really thick killer bark on them, um, you know, it'll be a hard wood and I'll use more of it. Um, that's just, just as an example. Mate, such good information there. Um, for the people at home that have their, their very own ax and their very own chainsaw, um, can they just go and get any type of wood? Um, look, you can't, well, you can, I mean, you want to stay clear of your softwoods. Um, they generally have, they're generally fairly porous and, um, and have lots of sap like pine, for example, like pot pine is good for, um, for running in your fire at home or, uh, you know, or, or, or your campfire or starting, you know, starting a little campfire. But, but look, you stick clear of that. Um, look, we, we, we sort of pick the best bits, you know, like, and my, um, like my burn off pile was quite, quite large because I would get rid of all the crap bits. So, um, if you, if you are that way inclined, if you want to get out there and get your chainsaw and, and do it, you can, um, just be mindful of the bar roll on, on your chainsaw. So, you know, that's another thing that I make sure is, going into any bag or say you don't want to be cooking with bar oil um so look yeah you can but why would you exactly exactly yeah yeah so tell me about um about the the seasoning and the storing process how important is that to to everything i mean look you've got to use you've got to use seasoned wood if you're using green wood it has too much moisture content you're not going to get an efficient burn um you know when you're not when you're not when you when your um, barbecue isn't burning efficiently or that wood isn't burning efficiently um, you're going to get that thick black or white smoke and it's highly likely you're going to end up with a bitter tasting product in the end. Um, like you always say, mate, you want to get that thin blue smoke rolling um, and that, that comes from um, well-seasoned wood, um, your your heat source and your wood and, and your smoking wood in the right proportion. So you don't want to have a, you don't want to have like a little fire and a big chunk of wood. There's an imbalance of energy there. So like when I explain to people about fire management and using wood um, in barbecue, I, I, I try and get them to think of it in scientific sort of, sort of in a scientific sort of way, because you've got your you've got your charcoal or whatever it is, which is your heat source, and you have a chunk of wood which you need to get to a, a relatively high temperature to get it to that efficient um, to that point where it's burning efficiently and you're getting that nice clean thin blue smoke. Yeah, very nice. That thin blue smoke is so important. Mm. So, lastly, I just want to quickly chat about um, about splitting wood. What what advice have you got? Because when because when I was living on the farm, I remember my dad it was one of the first times. Because similar to you, m- one of my jobs was making sure the wood was split and available for the house fire. And I remember one day I um, sort of just shaved the edge off the log with the axe, and it came down and it hit my foot. And I don't know how I managed to get away with it. It the axe sliced through the edge of my shoe and somehow did not touch my foot. Yeah. So what what advice would you have for safely and efficiently splitting wood? So practice, and I've had practice, and and obviously with with the the chunks of wood that I'm cutting, they're fairly small, um, and so I mean I've I've had some you know near misses, um, like I, I've cut my hands, um, but. But, but look, a long time ago, I've actually not been injured with, with you know, with cutting of any wood in this business. And I think it's just because I've been, I've been doing it like my whole life. So I've had lots of practice. But um, what, what um, my, part of my process is, is I take, say, larger logs and I'll, you know, use my hydraulic splitter to split it into a smaller log. And then it goes onto the table saw, which is a saw that the, the table moves and it actually moves into the blade. And so my fingers are well away from that. And then I basically it creates, you know, sometimes a chunk which is about this big. And so that chunk will then get cut on my table. 
Um, and you know, like you got to concentrate. You, you can't. You know, there's no beers and or no no scotches on the side. So, like it's all it's all like nicely lit, you know lit and stuff. So, like there's no mucking around. But mate, I I, I cut. I split just in the in, in in the business sense. It would be thousands of pieces of wood. Um, and you just got to switch on. So, again, if you if you want to go and do that, you can be careful. But why would you when you've got you got someone like me that can do it for you? You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd Ben Arnott. All right, Russell, in the third segment now, I want to get into some h- uh, hints and tips and techniques for the listeners and the viewers. Um, and I, what, I would, what I'm really fascinated in is that you have uh, on your website, it says fruit, nut, and hardwoods. So I was hoping that we could explore that a little bit and you could tell me about some of the differences between those three types of wood, what the, what the viewers and the listeners can expect to happen to their meat if they use those particular woods. Okay, so first and foremost, I'll say that the biggest difference with the varieties of wood that we have that I've found is actually how they smell when they're burning. So I'll give, I'll give nectarine a, a, as an example for the fruit wood. So that is distinctly sweet smelling. Um, and, and I think, you know, barbecue isn't just about the final product at the end of the day, right? So um, what, I, what I say to people is that if you've got people coming over um, for a barbecue, um, part of their experience is the smell. And I mean, I'm sure people that have been in a competition um, will say, when people walk up to them, they go, oh, that smells fantastic. It's probably one of the first things they, first things that they, they you know, that they get told. So, um, you know, you've obviously got your fruit woods, they have a very sweet smell, nectarine in particular. Um, and then you've got your iron bark, which is quite, um, it's distinctly different. Like it's fairly bold. Um, like the, the wood that I've got burning behind me is, is iron bark. And, and look, um, you could probably smell that from, from the street, which is a hundred meters away. So, cause it's, cause it is, it is so distinct. Um, look, as far as cooking, um, I think, um, there's subtle differences. Um, the biggest difference, um, and one other big difference is, is the burn time. So generally your, your, your free woods are lower density. And so they're, they're of availability, like their, their mass is lower. Um, and so, you know, they, they, they burn quicker, um, you know, so they're suited to shorter cooks or, um, or, and, and as a result of burn time and just their general makeup, they have a lighter influence in flavor. Like I, I can, can you put apricot wood on a, on a fire and then taste apricot on your chicken? No, it doesn't work like that, but you will notice a difference if you run say apricot versus iron bark on a chicken breast, you, you will notice a bigger smoke influence. It just depends on what you like. I mean, um, you know, um, I'll use that fish example. Like I like, I like a fairly intense smoke influence with fish, but it's probably because I've cooked a lot of it. Um, and so, you know, you're always looking to, to better it and, and your palate changes. And, and so, um, you might go for a hardwood or, or, you know, like iron bark, for example, or the Aussie oak or um, burn barrel. I mean, that, that burn barrel has been very popular. That like, I mean, the smell of that is really nice. Like it makes you, you know, where's the cake? So, you know, like you, you, it smells very much like it's a, it's a unique smell. It's very sweet, much like actual, actual bourbon. It's beautiful stuff. So, um, you know, when, when, and then when you talk about burn time with, um, like I said before, beef cheeks, um, you want to create that bark, and so when you when you're burning or, or when you're using wood, there's chemical reactions that are occurring in your barbecue, and um, there's um, a lot of components that make up smoke. Um, a couple in particular um, is syringol and guaycol. Um, they they um, they attribute to the smell and flavour that you that you get at the end of it. And in general, um, smoke influence should be on the sweet side. Um, if you're getting that bitter taste, generally you, you've stuffed something up and it's highly likely there wasn't enough air coming into your barbecue, your wood wasn't burning at a high enough temperature and you're getting an inefficient burn and an imbalance in chemicals produced as a result. Um, you know, like, I mean, people talk about smoke ring a lot and, um, and it's something that, you know, like pe- people think it's a, it's a sign that you've done the right thing or, or you know, will add flavour. Um, Look, um, 
lots of people in the know um, will say it doesn't. But I mean, it looks pretty. It looks good. And that's a reaction between components in smoke, um, one being nitric oxide mixing with um, chemicals uh, or, or um, myoglobin in the meat, which is the, that, that clear fluid you often find either when it's been cryobacked, it's like a clear fluid, it's not blood. Um, so when you get those two mixing together, um, what happens is the nitric oxide binds to, to portions of that meat on the outside and it prevents um, oxygen from, from getting it. And so it retains a red colour and promotes a red colour or maroon or purple on some occasions. So, um, you know, there are some barriers to that, fat being one. So if you've left, if you've left a lot of fat on, say, your brisket or your short ribs, um, you may find that that smoke penetration is a lot lower and maybe a reason as to why you, you haven't, you know, you haven't, you haven't come to get a smoke ring. But um, it's just the smoke ring is, is purely for looks. But, uh, but um, the, the best thing to do with, with wood and the varieties of wood is to try them yourself and because, like, everybody's palate is different. Um, look, smoke is only a small portion of the overall cook. I like to think of it as an ingredient, much like salt, pepper, whatever. It's not, it's not the star of the show. Um, you know, like I said, when you're bringing quality protein, a good but nice rub, um, whether it just be salt and pepper, you know, like, um, you know, um, I know, you know Jesse and Dane, um, they like to use just salt and pepper on, on beef um, and, and, you know, a bit of smoke. And so, you know, I mean, that, that's basically in a nutshell. I think um, I, I, I don't want to get too sciencey because I think people get a little bit bored with it. Um, and I, 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 like I try and... Um, you know, I mean, like I said, wood is one part of it. I know it's an important part for me, but um, and my business. But uh, I, I don't want people to become sort of wood snobs a little bit. You know, like, um, but yeah, I don't know. Connoisseurs of of timber. Yeah, yeah, you know, connoisseur. I mean, you know, like as long as you're not burning, you know, like pine and stuff, you, you can use basically anything for everything. But um, you know, then there's very subtle differences in in um, in, in flavour. You know. It's a bit like the wine industry where, you know, they say they can taste the Christian chocolate and whatever. Um, I think if you were cooking, I mean, if you were cooking a lot of barbecue, you might better tell the difference. And, look, I have in particular with you know, your white meats, like you can tell the difference between using a fruit wood and your hardwoods. Um, um, but uh, whether or not a lot of people can, I, I'm not sure. Fair enough. I want to loop back to something that you said right at the top of the episode, and I've had to write it on my piece of paper and then point it down here to the last segment because that's where it fit. You mentioned citrus wood, and I haven't heard many people talk about cooking with citrus woods before. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, so um, in the Riverland, obviously there's there's a lot of it there, and and we have been asked um, actually by growers if, if we'd like some. Um, and, uh, look, I've actually got some to try. Um, I just haven't had a chance to use a lot of it. Um, I was talking to Jim Sianis from Olive Pit and, uh, and you know, the Greeks love it. Like, they use a lot of it. Um, it, it goes again because it's probably available. So and like that's another thing with, you know, with your local woods and stuff. You know, use what's available to you. Um, you know, a lot of the American wood that comes over, hickory, mesquite and all that, like, it doesn't grow in Australia. So, um, you know, we've got plenty of, plenty of good options um, in, in Australia that you can use. So, yeah, look, citrus is one... Definitely um, need to experiment with that. Um, I think it's probably fairly low density, so it probably has a fairly short burn time. So you either need need to use a lot of it, um, or um, you know, yeah, or, or yeah, keep it for your short cooks. You know, like your, your chicken, your chicken breast, or something like that. Yeah, I reckon some chicken with some orange wood would go pretty good. Yeah, like it sounds good. Sounds good, doesn't it? When you, you know. <laughs> You know, that's what that's the thing, you know, like it sounds good using bourbon barrel and you know, like a bourbon glaze and like that's all part of it. It's all part of the fun. You know, especially if you do especially if you post it up, you know, you want it to sound cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the last thing then is what is your preferred wood for getting a real sexy smoke ring? So again, your hardwood. You need that burn time. Um, you need that mass. Um, again, like when you when you're talking, you know, w when you learn what a smoke ring is and how it's formed, you, you need to have that wood that's going to create it, and that's that's generally like your hardwoods, um, stuff that burns a lot. I mean, you you could use you could use any wood, but you'd need to use more of it. But you know, with like your iron, with your iron bark being so dense, um, that that's a good one. That that is a good overall 
Um, you know, uh, I mean, it's tried and true. It's used all around Australia. Um, and look, just one thing I will say on that, um, there's actually big differences in where stuff is grown. I mean, like Iron Bark up near you, mate, at Queen, in Queensland, is, is distinctly different to the stuff that's grown down here. Um, you know, the stuff that's grown up there is, uh, from my understanding, grown in fairly sandy soil, um, whereas down here we have, you know, a fairly short topsoil and then a lot of clay and then a limestone base. And so what that means is, is that clay holds moisture, it holds nutrient, the tree grows quicker, the, the growth rings are further apart, and so that equals a lower density wood, whereas the stuff that is up in the your neck of the woods is harder, heavier, um, better maybe. Um, but, uh, you know, it, that, that, that's, a, that's another big difference in, in, in smoking wood as well, where, where you get it from. That's fascinating, mate. That's really interesting stuff. All right, well, that's probably a good point now for us to start wrapping up this uh, this episode of the show. So I'm going to throw it over to you now. Give some thanks, give some shout-outs, show some appreciation to people that have helped you out, and make sure you tell us all where we can track down natural smoke on the internet. Cheers, mate. So, look, I, I think, I mean, I've, I've tried my best to mention the SA Barbecue Crew, um, but I think I, I need to make sure that uh, I say thanks to my wife first. Um, she is our admin manager um, and, and works just as hard as I do. Um, I could not do this business without her. Um, and then, you know, my extended family, mum and dad, um, you know, the in-laws, um, all the people that come here, get hands on, help us bag us, help us, you know, bagging wood. Like, it's, you know, it's, yeah, there's, a, there's a few bags that are going out now and it's a, it's a regular, they get regularly called up um, to come and help. Um, you know, um, also the businesses and stockers that have supported us, I mean, you can't have a business if, if there's nobody that's prepared to, to, to have you on your, on the shelf. So, you know, um, and we've had some fantastic um, support both NSA and Australia wide. So I've got to say thanks to those guys. Um, and the SA barbecue crew, the, 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 um, a lot of the customers, like we've got a lot of customers that are on the SA barbecue page, Facebook page, um, you know, their constant tags and shares and comments and stuff like I noticed them all and I appreciate them all. Um, I, I can't, I can't begin to start to name them because there's too many, but I do message them to say thanks. I think it's important to, um, to, to say thanks, especially when you're a small business to the, you know, to say thanks to the people that have helped you along the way. Um, I think I've got to mention Tom from Smoky Pastures. He's, he's been with us since day one. He helped us work through that wood smoking guide where we tested wood. And it took like six, seven, eight months to do that. Where we tested wood, we cooked lots of different food. We were looking at smoke influence in, you know, chicken, pork, beef, all this stuff. And, and, and he had a big part to play in that. Um, I learned heaps from Tom. Um, he's a good mate. Uh, Dane as well. Um, I've asked Dane lots of questions. Uh, he's always willing to answer them. Um, you know, the amount of time that he spends answering questions and uh, having an impact on the SA barbecue scene as, the, you know, as one of the admins, um, you know, hats off to him. He's put SA barbecue in a pretty good space through um, the moderation of that page, created a really good environment. Um, uh, Abel, I've got to say thanks to Abel. He was one of the first business people that I ever contacted. Um, He's offered lots of advice. He's, he's very, um, yeah, he's got a successful business in, in himself and he was always willing to share um, his thoughts. Um, I've had many conversations with Abel and mate, he, he's, he's got some stories, mate. He, he's, he's lived a life, you know, doing business in South Africa. He, uh, hats off to him. It's a different world over there. So I've um, got to say thanks to him. Um, look, Jim Sianas from Ola Pipco. He's, he's you know, part of the part of the team. Um, he, he's looked after looked after us. Um, just as an example, recently um, we got some wood to his warehouse, and he actually loaded it onto a pallet for us and sent it off to the Hook and Cleaver um, in Victoria. You know, because I don't have I don't have the facilities to do that. So, you know, that's just one example um, of you know how he's helping us out. Um, then you've got you know um, Kyle Rub and Grub meet your needs. Um, Always willing to help out, um, you know, um, Steve, Austral Meats, Kelly from St. James, Carly from Bruce Smith. Look, mate, the list goes on. There's, there's heaps of them. And, and look, I'm going to say sorry to people that I've forgotten, but yeah, there's, there's just too many. Like, I, I spend a lot of time talking to people and like, 
they, they, they know who they know who they are. I, I think um, you know I, I'm. I always try to um, show some appreciation. Beautiful man, beautiful words. Now, can you just quickly remind us where we can track you down on uh, on the socials? Okay, so um, Natural Smoke on Facebook, Instagram. Um, we've got a website, uh, naturalsmoke.com.au. dot um, So on our pinned post on Facebook, we have a list of all of our stockists, and that's that's Australia wide. Uh, that's also on the website. So um, yeah. That's probably the, the best places, or on the SA barbecue page. So there's, there's people listening that are on the S, that are from SA. Seriously, jump on that page. It's really good, and you'll see me there. It is actually, yeah. I've I've uh, I'm I'm a member of that group, even though I'm not from SA. And uh, I've, I, I notice a lot of names of people that are not in SA either. So it's obviously a very popular group there on Facebook. Yeah, we we, we call we call you guys Mexicans here uh, from across the border. Oh, okay. Special invite only. Yeah, exactly. Well, I I feel very privileged now. No, mate, it's great group, really good people. Glad you're a part of it, mate. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, look, man, thank you very much for taking time out tonight to to come on board the show and and chat with me. It's a Friday night. I know you got a packed weekend coming up tomorrow, so I do appreciate you taking this time out of what I would imagine would be some precious few sleep hours if you're getting up at three in the morning to go out and go collect woods and things. So I really do appreciate the time, and I wish you all the best of luck with everything with everything that you're doing. Thanks, mate. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Keep up with the work. And there you have it, family. That was Russ from Natural Smoke. How interesting was that? Talking about woods is not something that you hear about often in barbecue, but it's one of the fundamental pieces of barbecue. And so I love—I just love getting in there and talking with these fellas that are into wood and finding out all the different sciencey things behind it. It's fascinating stuff. Now, before you go, I just want to just remind you, if you're looking to build a brand or attract sponsors to your barbecue team, check out Meat and Fire Media Services, half price off their course at the moment. Use the code word SANTA, meatandfiremediaservices.com. It's the brand building through strategic social media marketing course. It's fantastic stuff. If you want uh, some Smoking Hot Confessions merch under your Christmas tree, make sure you order it this week so I can get it to the post office as quick as I possibly can. If you are new to the barbecue game, head on over to the website, check it out. A pop-up window will appear. Put your details in there and we will send you our free ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. And after you've done that, jump on Facebook and join us at the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Community. It's a real nice corner of the internet and it's a great place to hang out. And there are just some real down-to-earth barbecue nuts in there who would just love to share their knowledge with you and help you along the way. And finally, if you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you're on Facebook, like, share, give us a comment as well if you've got a question or if you just want to say, hey, Russ, great stuff, loved hearing about your wood. On Instagram, make sure it's the little love heart and the follow button. And if you're listening on a podcasting app, particularly if it's Apple, give us a five-star rating and review. We would really, really appreciate that. It's super important for us. It only takes a couple of seconds of your time. And so that is all the time that we have for today. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions.